Bed Bath & Beyond is on the brink of bankruptcy. They basically just have this Q4 holiday season to maintain survival as a company. And so what are y'all's thoughts on this? It's just interesting to see that their back is literally against the wall right now because this is a brand I feel like I really grew up with. It was in the local mall where we grew up in Potomac Mills. Yeah. And it's crazy to see that, you know, they have, it seems like everything going against them right now. They have a new CEO. They have an interim CEO, interim CFO. They're just facing debt and supply chain issues, every, everything that possibly could go wrong is going wrong right now for them. Yeah, their stock's been going like that recently, and it's been plummeted in the, the last few uh, months, honestly. So, I mean, it's going to be kind of interesting to see if they are able to bounce back. You know, they have a really good holiday season, Black Friday right around the corner, you know, so you never know. To be honest with you, I kind of have a small solution of a today's society solution that Bed Bath & Beyond could implement. And I know crypto is kind of, you know, it's in, in the in the sink right now. You know, it's you know the market's pretty low. But to be honest with you, I think this would be a great time for Bed Bath and Beyond to actually try to build an NFT project that people could buy into the uh, Bed Bath and Beyond NFT. Basically, it would bring them a lot of cash flow up front. It could be for like a couple ETH or something like that. They buy in, and basically, what the promise is, if you buy the Bed Bath and Beyond NFT you have a lifetime exchange for free of any appliance that you buy from them. So if you like ha if you like need to ex like if you buy their NFT and you have like a blender or something like that that you want to exchange, they'll do it for free. You can just pick whatever one you want pretty much within within reason. Like they could put some more restraints, but this would provide them a ton of cash flow up front if they could have a way to communicate to their their customer base, which probably, to be honest with you, probably doesn't understand NFTs very well. But if they could kind of understand them, it's kind of like a lifetime membership program. You get free, uh, free stuff. This would create them a ton of cash flow up front. And if they hold that ETH and the market goes back up, then Bed Bath & Beyond will make a ton of money in the long run. I really like that. I mean, I think doing something within crypto would be a great way to go ahead and get some cash flow or just a bunch of cash get in the door. Um, another thing that I thought was really interesting about their strategy and something that they're pivoting off of is they started for a couple of years to create their own private label brands under their company, and they weren't really successful in doing that. So now what they're kind of relying on and their strategy going into Q4 is relying on national brands uh, to bring people in. What are you guys kind of thoughts on, on them switching that strategy? I think, honestly, them bringing in more known and named brands that people kind of recognize is a great way to go about it since they weren't able to do private labels successfully. You know, some people just, they they assume when they go to Bed Bath & Beyond, it's just a wholesale that you just go there. There's just a bunch of different brands that people can uh, buy from. They aren't really expected to see that Bed Bath & Beyond private label. And, you know, really maybe if they were open to bringing in more named brands from outside sources, then, you know, maybe their relationships with their suppliers will improve. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've I've always felt like, I don't know, I've always felt that Bed Bath & Beyond was such kind of like a renowned name in that kind of like uh, like home, the, the interior, like all the, the things that they sell. I feel like they've always been like the number one leading kind of in that space for soap, sanitizers, uh, you know, house fragrance, whatever it may be. Yeah, with the, you know, internal kind of destruction of their company and a lot of members stepping down and their CFO passing away, it's kind of, you know, crazy to see the position that their company's in because if you were to you know tell me this a year or two ago where I was in their stores in the mall of Georgia or out in you know near Washington DC and their people there's lines out to get into the store it's kind of crazy to think that this is kind of the point that they've got to you know so it just goes to show just how stressful it can be you know to work in a, in a big business like that and how hard it can be to stay afloat